Hi there. Today it's a trip down south for the Virginia 500 at Martinsville, Virginia. Anytime they start 36 cars on a half mile track, well, you can bet we'll be there. You see, Martinsville is an exceptional racing plant. To draw names like Richard Petty, David Pearson, Bobby Isaac, Leroy Yarborough, Bobby Allison, plus many more, and to pay them a purse of $45,000, and then jam the stands with 30,000 race fans, well, it has to be some kind of record. I think you'll like this one, and we'll try it on for size in one minute. In the state of Virginia, it's quite common to see bumper tags stating that Virginia is for lovers. However, it's quite a state for race fans, too. And one man largely responsible for the growth is Clay Earls. He's the president of Martinsville Speedway. And this man's congeniality and true dedication to the sport has built this track into one of the finest facilities on the NASCAR circuit. A beautiful half mile oval that offers the ultimate in action. And as the old carnival man used to say, it all happens right before your very eyes. If you've ever wondered where all the great promoters went, we suggest a trip to Martinsville Speedway and a visit with Clay and his very able assistant, Dick Thompson. After experiencing a little of the warmest type of Southern hospitality, you will understand why we return annually for the Virginia 500. Martinsville Speedway, one of the prettiest and best run little tracks on the entire Southern Circuit. And this 17th annual Virginia 500 marks their silver anniversary. At 10 a.m. with all seats sold, it was standing room only. By race time, there was a record crowd of 30,000 to make possible a purse of over $45,000. It was a super celebration. And in return, Clay Earls gave the fans all the superstars of NASCAR. David Pearson. Richard Petty is the favorite. He has 10 wins at this track. Bobby Isaac, Charlie Glatzbach, and the pole sitter, Bobby Allison, who turned in a record qualifying run of 84.163 miles per hour in the Junior Johnson prepared Chevrolet. With a warm Virginia sun pushing the temperature into the 70s, it was an ideal day for racing, and all drivers climbed aboard. Starting next to Allison was Bobby Isaac in the Dodge 71. Richard Petty was third in the familiar 43 Plymouth. Starting fourth was David Pearson in 21, the Wood Brothers Mercury. Then Leroy Yarbrough and Bill Dennis. Buddy Arrington and Charlie Glatzbach were in the fourth row. And as they leave this 36-car field around for the green flag, the United States Air Force performed their famous missing man formation flyover, honoring the war dead and those missing in action. The thunder of the jets was matched only by the explosive power of the cars as they wound up down the front chute for the green flag, and this race was underway. On the back shooting into turn three. Bobby Isaac noses out Allison to take the early lead. up on the inside of David Pearson. They go for a side-by-side -side battle for two laps, and Richard finally edges him in the fourth turn to take over third. It's Isaac, Allison, Petty, Pearson, and the traffic is thick. have already started to lap the slower cars and brushing fenders in every turn. Allison and Petty both find a hole underneath Isaac and power their way through to take over first and second. the 
quarterback shoot. Allison leads in the Coca-Cola Chevy 12. Petty second in 43. Isaac is third in the Dodge 71, with Pearson pacing himself well in the fourth spot. Petty wants to try on the lead for size. He presses Allison hard, moves up on the inside, and both drivers stage a three-lap battle that puts the crowd in a frenzy. Turn four, Petty finds the hole and screams the Plymouth through. The familiar number 43 is now number one. Richard in front. Bobby Isaac decides to make it a Chrysler day and pours his 71 Dodge under Allison to take over second. Jimmy Hensley in the Ford number 90 just blew the differential on the backstretch and dumps oil all the way through the fourth turn. This brings out the first yellow flag of the day and Pitt Row comes alive with action. stops are fast, but the Wood Brothers won it again. They get David back on the track in 19 seconds. This will put him in first place on the restart. The pace car wheels off the track and all cars come down for the second green flag of the day. Pearson is first, 71 Isaac second, 43 Petty is third, with number 45 Leroy Yarborough fourth. Pearson is trying to lose Isaac and Petty back in the traffic but they're passing cars high and low in an effort to catch him. Into the third turn, Petty drops down low, challenges Bobby Isaac and passes him in turn forward. Now Richard is second. is unbelievable. They're running through the turns three and four abreast. In the fourth turn, Petty catches Pearson. Petty low, Pearson high, side by side, and rub it off the numbers. This is the kind of racing that puts the crowd on their feet. turn Richard finally takes the lead and Bobby Isaac moves up to do battle with Pearson for the second spot and the second yellow flag of the day flies when Dave Boggs stalls in the first turn and coasts onto the infield grass with ignition trouble now the race is in the pits
race car goes off, the green is out, and the restart is on. In the first turn, Bobby Isaac takes the outside and the lead, but keep your eye on Petty. His Plymouth is screaming. Dennis in car number 23 just lost it in the third turn and spun out. This brings out another caution light. Bobby Allison is the first car in. When Dennis spun, Allison went high and brushed the wall, damaging the right rear tire. On the restart, it's Petty, Isaac Pearson, and company. Richard has the lead, but he can't run away. Bobby Isaac in the Dodge 71 works him over on every turn. Lap after lap, this Plymouth Dodge duel continues. Every time Isaac is about to pass, he runs into heavy traffic and has to back off. Second turn, Bobby finds a hole and slams through to take the lead. Isaac, the veteran from Catawba, North Carolina, is slashing his way through traffic high and low in an all-out effort to run away from Richard Petty. Uh-oh. With a half a lap lead over Petty and Pearson, Bobby Isaac has slowed up. He drops down in the lowest groove and heads for Pitt Row. The Dodge let go with a puff of smoke on the back chute, and that Hemi just might have come unglued. When they check it over, they find a blown piston, and Bobby climbs out of the car and out of the race. While Isaac pitted, David Pearson came with an all-out charge, passed Petty, and took the lead. Pearson has the Purillator Mercury wound out. The Wood Brothers have given him the sign to go, and Petty is slowly closing the gap. Pearson and Petty, they're at it again. We've seen them wage this battle from Florida to California. Now it's Martinsville. The size of the track means nothing. They just love to race, and they're two of the best. and just blew the mercury up in smoke. Petty was closing and pushing him harder on every lap. Finally, it happened, and Davey carries the Wood Brothers banner behind the wall out of the race. With oil on the track, the yellow flag comes out once again. Petty and Allison both scream into the pits to pick up enough fuel to make the final laps.
car goes in, the green is out, and Petty leads the pack for the restart. at least two laps over any other car in the field. If he keeps it all together, he's got another Martinsville trophy. Here he comes out of the fourth turn, down the front chute for the white flag, one more lap to go. the first car to complete 500 laps, and Richard Petty is the winner of the Virginia 500.